welcome to the Bev Hepburn Show. Today, my guest has an encouraging story of how his stepson overcame the impossible, walking when he was destined to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life due to a rare syndrome. Please help me welcome our special benefic I can't say beneficent guest, Mr. Steve Blakely. Steve, for being our guest today. Could you tell us what this rare syndrome is? Mm -hmm. Well, Bev, my stepson was born with acrocolosis syndrome. It's a genetic disorder that affects the mid part of the brain in terms of development, resulting in poor motor skills, mental retardation, extra digits on the hands and feet, and a few other symptoms. My stepson, Warren, he was born with an extra thumb on each hand. So he had two thumbs on each hand and two big toes on each foot. The bones in his feet were misshaped. They're in the shape of an S, causing his feet to be extra wide. And we joke, he has hobbit feet, just like in the movie. But because of his poor motor skills, my stepson, his only mobility was to sit on the floor with his bum and just pull his bum along the floor. When we were outside our home, his only mobility was in a wheelchair or in a stroller. He had two other challenges. He often sees double, and at one year of age, when he had his immunization shot, he reacted very badly and lost his speech. The experts at McMaster Hospital did everything they could for him. And after a few years, they told us, we really have no hope of him ever walking. Uh, he'll probably be in a wheelchair the rest of his life. Wow. How did you respond, Steve, when you were told there was nothing more could be done for your stepson's challenges? We were very disappointed. But we always had this feeling and confidence inside that Jesus <coughs> Christ had a plan for us, and he did. Shortly after that, we were walking through chapters on, on route to Starbucks, and this book literally jumped out at my wife. It's called How to Teach Your Baby to Read by Glenn Doman. And on the back, my wife read about the author and read that there's this institute in Philadelphia called the Institute for Achievement of Human Potential and they've helped thousands of special needs children to overcome their disabilities without surgery and without medication. So shortly after that, we were enrolled in that institute. Wow. So how did he become a walker? What did the institute do or prescribe? The institute has therapy that they prescribed that was 10 hours a day, seven days a week. All of this therapy was designed to rebuild the damaged pathways in the brain. For example, one of the first things my stepson had to learn to do was learn to crawl, and that took a lot of months and a lot of work. But once he learned to crawl, he had a goal where he had to work up to crawling one mile a day every day. That's 1,600 meters. And the Institute said when he could do that goal, he will be able to stand up and balance himself, and they were right. There's also many other things of physical therapy that had to be done during the day, and our house is full of all this apparatus and equipment, but it was all designed to improve his brain function. There was also different masks he would wear throughout the day, some connected to an oxygen machine, and some, as you see on the far right, uh, it was a mask designed by NASA for this institute, which helps improve oxygen to the brain. He'd wear that mask for 45 seconds over 50 times a day. He also had an educational component in his program during the day. My stepson did learn to read by flashcards. He learned to read by sight, memorizing the shapes of the words. It took about five to 10 minutes a day. He'd learn several hundred words a week. When he was eight years old, he was assessed at reading and writing at a 16-year-old's level. 
he also had uh, a similar technique where he learned mathematics by flashcards and also encyclopedic bits of knowledge, so about plants, animals, art, you name it, he learned it. And there was a third part of the program, and that was diet. He was on a ton of supplements, and he had to avoid any foods that would compromise brain function. So no dairy, no gluten, no processed sugary foods, no processed foods of any sort that had preservatives or those types of chemicals. So it was a completely whole, whole food, natural diet. And how long did this whole process take? It took five years, Beth, for him to become a walker. Wow. It was a long time. In fact, most families who do this program have three family members that work on it full time. In our case, we didn't have that option. So my wife quit her job and she hired two full-time people and one part-time to do this program. It was a beneficent uh, investment for sure, but it was well worth it because my stepson no longer needs a wheelchair. How can you put a price on that? Wow. What would you say to other parents who have a special needs child? <coughs> I would say two things. The first thing is this. The experts in our traditional medical system only know what they're trained in, which is really good to have. But they do not know what they're not trained in, as evident by this case with this institute in Philadelphia that's helped thousands of special needs children over the last 50 years. The second thing I would say is this. If Jesus Christ is a friend to you like he is to my wife and I, I say this to you. Trust him and listen to him because he has a great plan for you. And in the case of my stepson, I am so glad that we listened and trusted him because he had a great plan for us. And as you can see by this, video, it'll come up there. He has no problems walking at all today. Oh my God. I'd like to thank you, Steve, for coming in and being our guest today. How about a warm round of applause for yeah. our guest, Mr. Steve?